I bought this Samsung Galaxy Watch Pro 5. All excited about the newest, latest and greatest Galaxy Watch, but I've got to return it. And I'm going to tell you why, but first things first, let's take a look. Because this is the top of the line Samsung Galaxy Watch. And as you can see, it looks pretty nice. They've stuck with their tried and tested round bezel shape. You've got all the features that you would expect from a high-end smartwatch. Oh, what's that? It's my new timer cube. Check this out. So it has these little numbers on it. Five, 10, one, three. And so I just put it down on a table with the three showing and it starts the timer at three. Oh, I need a 10 minute timer or a one minute timer. Or you know what, I need a 20 minute timer. I'm just gonna press it and it makes it 20. And now I can forget about it. I can carry on doing my work and it's just gonna beep. If you want a little productivity hack, check out this. It's called a Tick Time Cube. I'm gonna put a link in the description below. It just does what you want. If I just want to know the time that I've spent on something, I can just put it vertically and now it's just gonna count. So let's talk about the differences between a regular Samsung Galaxy Watch and the Pro. Okay, just to run through this real quick. So the Pro is gonna be a little bit heavier, 46 and a half grams versus the large regular watch at 33 grams. That's a meaningful jump, 13 grams on a 33 gram watch. The new one's made out of titanium. The, the regular one is aluminum. It's the same chip in both of them, same 1.5 gig of RAM, 16 gig of storage, same size displays, 1.36 inches at 330 PPI. Getting all technical here at Mike Drops Tech, even though we don't like getting overly technical, but I want to run through this for you. Heart rate monitors, continuous uh, oxygen levels, all that kind of fun stuff. 410 milliamp hours jumps to 590 milliamp hours, and you've got all the same things, Bluetooth 5.2, Wi-Fi's in there, GPS, NFC, LTE. So this is an interesting one. You know, it is a little bit of an upgrade, but this is not the Apple Watch Ultra to the Apple Watch. This is not drastically changing the world for those of you that are looking at the Samsung watches. It's just a little bit better for those who want something more. So let's check it out real quick. And then I'm gonna tell you the problem that I've noticed and why I can't keep this watch. If we look at the menu dial here, I actually prefer the round dials compared to the rectangle of an Apple watch, but that's just me. I can swipe right in and instantly I can see my activity levels done a whopping 14 steps because I haven't been wearing the watch, obviously. And I can scroll through, I can do my usual activities, I can set my routes if I'm gonna go and, and take a ride or a hike. This was pretty cool. I can measure, I, I'm, I'm gonna put in here 195 pounds because that's kind of what I weigh. And I can place my two fingers on these side keys here. And it's gonna measure my body mass. It's gonna measure how fat Uncle Mikey is, how much my bones weigh and all that kind of good stuff. I did tell it I was six foot four. So this is using the two side buttons. It's kind of a conduit between my fingers. And lo and behold, it tells me here's my weight, my skeletal muscles, about 82 pounds. It's good to know. My fat mass, we're not even gonna get into that. Let's blur that out on the shot so nobody knows how much loose, uh, whatever, body fat, 22%. BMI 23.7, I don't know that I wanna be sharing all this online. Like, what if somebody posts this and does something with it? I don't know. Uh, so that's kinda of cool. And then uh, we've, got some, we've got some other options here. Sleep tracking, you got the weather obviously that you can add in there if you want. And got some notifications from my calendar. I've got the ECG so I can record my, um, my heart, but I've gotta download an app for that. So, and then heart rate. Now this is where it gets interesting. It won't measure my heart rate. Couldn't measure. Let's try and measure my stress. Okay, won't measure my stress. Keep trying, doesn't wanna do it. One of the things I do like before we get back to that is on this edge is actually a touch sensitive I can just slide around and scroll through my things. It's so effortless, it's so easy, and it's so nice compared to turning a dial because it's just there, it's just touch, it's like a capacitive touch sense. 
and I think it's a really nice feature on the Samsung watches. They started this years ago with the dial that you could turn, and now they've elevated it to a different level. I think it's a good move. It's really easy to use. And look, the watch feels nice, okay? It feels nice in your hand. It does feel lightweight. It doesn't feel heavy and bulky like an Apple Watch Ultra. Although, to be fair, it doesn't really feel that heavy either. And I know this isn't a comparison of the two because they're very different watches for very different audiences, and they are not comparable. This, this is a pro, this is an ultra. And I think those names are great because it really does separate. Take away the ultra extreme features of the Apple Watch. And you know, the pro is good enough for what most people are gonna need it to do. But here's the problem. You may have noticed that Uncle Mikey has a few tattoos. Yes, we've talked about this on the Apple Ultra video also. And lo and behold, the Galaxy Watch is exactly the same. On the back, the way that these watches work is they have sensors and those sensors read through the skin and look for the blood flow and other you know, things that are happening kind of sub-level. And the problem is when you have ink like this, it doesn't work. And I know some folks are like, Mike, this is old news, but it wasn't old news to me because I didn't know and you might not know. So for those of us that don't know, this is new news, okay? I've done some digging into this and looked into it a little bit more and also, I've had some comments from my Apple Watch Ultra video, and it seems as though dark inks for sure don't play nice. So if you have got ink in the wrist area, you are not going to be using a smartwatch from Samsung or Apple anytime soon, unless you want to get it lasered, as somebody did. Um, I don't want to do that because I like my ink more. But where it gets really interesting is I've had a couple of folks tell me they've got colored ink. I don't know which colors but they've got colored ink and the watches do work through the color. So I don't know if it's something to do with the black particularly, if certain colors are just different in the way that they soak into the skin. I know generally in, in the tattoo world, if you get colored tattoos, they tend to fade a little bit differently than black. So it may be something to do with that. The only other option is, uh, another one of my comments is, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna drop these on the screen so you can see them, was kind enough to point out, he actually sticks something on the back of the watch to try and help that, that light get a clearer focus through the skin and it seems to work for him as well. So look at, I, I think it's important for us to know if you are a tattooed person and you're looking at smartwatches, this is not something that you really wanna get overly excited about because it's not gonna play ball for you. Other than that, is this a good Samsung watch? If you're an Android user, if you're a Galaxy user and watches are your thing, it's really nice and you get a lot of discounts right now when you buy this bundled with a phone and all that kind of fun stuff. But is it enough when Google are just about to drop the new Pixel Watch? I've got mine arriving tomorrow. So by the time this video is live, we'll be checking that out. But from everything I'm reading, the Pixel Watch has got all of the history and the smarts of Fitbit rolled into it. And it may be the watch to beat. So stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Till next time, subscribe there and be amazing.